Consider the equation y equals x squared. What this does is it has two different variables, y and x, and it expresses some relation between them. And I could imagine an equation that had more variables than just the two here. For example, the equation x1 squared plus cos of x2 minus 2e to the power of x3 equals 5, that's just some messy equation in three different variables, x1, x2, and x3. Now, these kinds of so-called non-linear equations, equations with exponentials and signs and squares in them, they're very complicated and you can study them, but the study of them is very messy. And in our course, in linear algebra, we're going to look at equations that have multiple variables, but we're going to restrict ourselves to a specific type. We're going to study in this course are these linear equations, equations where every variable like x1, x2, x3, it just occurs to the power of 1. I might multiply those variables by various coefficients, numbers like 2 and minus 1 and 1 and 8, but any variable, it's only going to occur to the power of exponent 1. Then a solution to a linear equation is just me telling you what the x1, the x2, and the x3 values are going to be. If I specify some list of numbers, for example, here 2 times 2 is 4, minus minus 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, if I plug those numbers into the equation, then it does indeed satisfy it. So that is a solution to a linear equation. And one thing to note is that often these linear systems have multiple different solutions. For example, x1 is 4, x2 is 0, and x3 is 0 is also a solution that, that also satisfies this equation. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 8. Okay, so that was linear equations, which is nice, but now let's upgrade. Let's look at linear systems of equations. And in a linear system of equation, what we're going to have is multiple lines of linear equations. And the key point is that all of these equations that I have, they're true at the same time. A solution to the system of all three equations must solve each equation individually. So for example, if we look at that 2 minus 1, 3, well, if I plug that in everywhere I have an x1, an x2, or an x3, indeed it does satisfy, and we can plug it in and check that all of those numbers are indeed equalities. But I do want to note something here. Remember the solution 4, 0, 0 just to the top row? That still is a solution to the top row. 4, 0, 0 is a solution to the top row, but it is not a solution to the bottom row any longer. It is not the case that every solution to an individual equation solves the entire system. It has to solve all three equations. Now, linear systems can get big and complicated. There can be many different rows, there can be many different variables, so we want a systematic way to express it. And our systematic way is this. It's using something called AIJ notation. So what I have, all of the blue, all of these are my coefficients. They're just some number like 3 and 7 and 0 and minus 1 and pi and whatever you might like. And then the x1 down to the xn, those are going to be my variables. That's the thing I'm trying to solve for. And then the b1 down to the bm, these are also just numbers, but because they're not associated to a variable, they don't have a variable attached to them, I'm going to call them a bit of a different name. I'll call the, the b's constants, and I'll call the aij's coefficients. So what do I have in this system? I have n different variables, my x1 down to my xn, and I have m different equations, b1 down to bm, enumerating the different rows in my linear system. And then the way to refer to the aij notation is that aij represents the ith row and the jth column. So for example, a12, well, that's going to be this one right here. Uh, it's the first row and the second column when I reference a12. All right, so what is a solution to this linear system? Well, I have to tell you what the x1 down to the xn are. That is, a solution is going to be a list of numbers, an s1 down to the sn for solution, corresponding to the x1 down to the xn, the variables. A list of numbers where if I take those numbers and then I just, everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put them in there, and now I have everything in terms of my specific values, my solutions, my s1 down to the xn, it has to satisfy every single equation. So those are linear systems of equations. That's the big topic that we want to deal with in this course, but 
Just writing them out is a bit boring. The big question for the future that we're going to answer pretty quickly here, but there will be a lot of nuance to it, is this. How do I solve a linear system of, of equations? How do I find such a solution? So that question we're going to answer pretty soon. But in the next video, we're going to answer the question, how do I look at this geometrically as opposed to algebraically, which is what I did in this video.